Well, thanks for staying with us with uh, our interviews from Seton Hill University uh, in the In Your Right Mind conference. Joining us uh, now is Maria and Lucy, or maybe I should say our Maria and Lucy, both last names Snyder, no relation though. No, no, though I like to joke that we're identical twin sisters because it's funny to watch people's reaction because they'll, they'll look at Lucy, they'll look at me, they'll look at Lucy like, is she joking or what is she yeah. doing? Yeah. No. It completely yeah. throws them yeah, off. Yeah, it completely yeah. throws them off, you know, and as a writer we kind of have a, a mischievous... That kind of a sense of humor? Yeah. You have Absolutely. to play with people a little bit. I do, you know? yes, I do. I, so you both write fantasy, but I asked you that question before we started, and you said different flavors. So why don't we yes. talk about the type of fantasy that each of you write? Okay, well, I write um, what I like to call as fantasy light. Okay. Uh, it's a very uh, accessible fantasy. Uh, my, my swords and horses are normal, but the people don't speak like they're in medieval Europe. I'm very character focused. I mean, I do some world building, but I don't do a lot of world building. If, if like Lord of the Rings is like fantasy heavy, because of all the world building, all the details and the languages and the richly drawn world, which is wonderful, but that's not me. Okay. So I'm very light, and actually I skew more young adult than adult, and it's funny because in the United States, I'm a, considered an adult writer, fantasy, but in the United Kingdom and Australia, I'm considered a young adult author with the same exact books. So I think too, because I skew a little younger in my fantasy, mm -hmm. and that's, that's the type I am. So. Conversely, I write dark fantasy. Yes. Um, I write uh, very dark fantasy. It's squarely adults-only stuff. Um, I'll deal with a lot of horror tropes in a more uh, fantastic setting. I'm the author of an urban fantasy trilogy from Del Rey, which is an imprint of Random House. And um, the first book in that series was uh, nominated for a Bram Stoker Award. So the horror people were sort of recognizing the horror elements in that. Um, but most of what I write in terms of fantasy is set in the modern day, contemporary settings, that type of thing. Oh, yeah, definitely. And I skew, I get, uh, she gets Bram Stoker nominations and I get nominations from the uh, Romance Writers of America. <laughs> so kind of so, other ends of yes, the spectrum. Yes, but we're both <laughs> fantasy, so. Right. It, it just goes to, to show you kind of how broad mm -hmm. the genres yes, can, can really broad, be. Yes. Uh, I was walking around last night in, in, in kind of, uh, laughing to myself about the different genres that were on the author's uh, tags at the book signing. Yes. Because you could have someone who's distinguishing themselves completely differently than someone else, but the books are similar. Or mm -hmm. you could have two mm -hmm. people that are in the exact same genre, and like you are, mm -hmm. they're at different ends of the spectrum. So right. it's, it's kind of right. interesting, the boxes that uh, authors and, and probably more publishers put them into. Exactly. It right. is the publishers mm -hmm. because they want to be able to put your book on a shelf in a yeah. certain spot or now with online be able to tag you a certain way so readers can find you. See Lucy's readers are looking for that dark horror element and they're going right. to go for her and if they accidentally get one of my books they're going to be like ah oh, <laughs> well, this is just so sweet. Yeah. Ugh, coming terrible. Back, you know, Maria, coming from a bookseller standpoint, because I used to sell books for five years, I was in a bookstore, brick and mortar, and yes. finding they still your, have those. They do still have them. They're harder they're, to find. They're hard they to do find. still exist. Finding your books on the shelf was always a bit of a challenge because you never knew where they were going to shelf them. Right. And sometimes they were shelved in romance and sometimes they were shelved in science fiction. Yes. And then other times you might find them back in YA. Uh, but in a brick and mortar setting, your books are going to be in the same place, generally speaking. Right. So that it's it's the tagging thing is just remarkable. I love yes. it. Yes. Now I want to circle back around because you were, okay. you had uh, mentioned for a moment that in the United States you're more adult. Overseas, right. uh, mm -hmm. you are YA. Right. Is that an international distinction that is? Or do we draw our lines in different places? Is what I'm asking internationally. Uh, well, I think when I first started. My books were for adults because it was before the twilight phenomena. Mm -hmm. And it was always known that a young adult situation, you had young characters. You had like a 17-year-old girl, and usually the male was like 19, 18. But then twilight came along, and you had a 125-year-old vampire. And it no longer was such a bad thing to have a romance between older, an older character and a younger character. My main character was 19, and he was 33. So uh -huh. that was that was always like oh it can't be YA that's <laughs> he's too old you know he's ancient at 33 <laughs> right and uh, so but when Twilight came along it was like well that's no longer such a big deal 
Mm -hmm. And so I think just because I published a little later in the UK and Australia, they picked it up and they just ran with the YA. So it was more of a timing than an it international was a more of a timing line thing. that's been I drawn. think so. And plus, YA was going off the charts. Everybody was reading YA and YA was selling really well. So I think, you know, UK, they wanted to sell the books, so market it as a YA book. So, Absolutely. Yeah. What's next for both of you? Well, for me, I'm working on a, um, a healer series, a fantasy healer series, and the third book is due out in December. Uh, she has the ability to heal, and I think it's interesting that Diana Botsford was here with her Star Trek mm -hmm. uh, connections. I got the idea of the healer from the empath, one of the episodes of Star Trek, and where she, if she, her, her powers is if you have a broken arm, she'll touch you and get your broken arm, but then she'll heal herself maybe a lot faster than you would. Okay. So she had to be careful who she was going to heal because, you know, if you have a broken arm, you, you should be okay. But if you were, had a bad infection or something. So sure. I got that idea. So the third book's coming out in December, and then I'm working on a uh, middle grade novel, which is for kids 9 to 12 years old, and it doesn't have any fantasy or, or romance or science fiction in it at all. It's a complete freak. But, <laughs> but it's for my son. So, and Lucy? Well, I recently won the Bram Stoker Award uh, in short fiction for a story called Magdala Amygdala, um, and that's been picked for uh, Year's Best Horror, an uh, anthology edited by Ellen Datlow, and that'll be podcast on the Pseudopod podcast uh, in mid-July. Um, so as a consequence of all this, I've been getting a lot of anthology invitations, so I've been yes. writing a lot of short fiction lately. The next thing that's coming up in terms of me writing it is a story for a steampunk anthology mm. that's going to be world steampunk. It's all stories um, that don't take place in Britain or America. I'm going to be writing something that takes place in Victorian India oh. because there's some really cool history I can kind of play around with there. Um, other than that, I've got uh, we've got a Kickstarter going on for an anthology of uh, divination fantasy called What Fates Impose, and that'll be out later this year. And I've gotten some invitations for um, stories, uh, urban fantasy, mystery anthology, things like that. That's fun. And I'm also writing more short stories in my uh, Jesse Shimmer series. That's the aforementioned urban fantasy trilogy. And a few of those stories have been coming out in uh, anthologies like Appalachian Undead and things like that. So I'm sort of continuing, uh, continuing the uh, adventures of Jesse Shimmer there. So. Well, it looks like we are running just a little bit short on time here, okay. uh, so I want to be able to get out contact information. Uh, do you have a website? Absolutely. LucySnyder.com. Uh, you can find me on Twitter, Facebook, pretty much everywhere. Absolutely. And I'm MariaVSnyder.com, and I'm also on Facebook. Uh, I'm not on Twitter. I don't oh, have... You're probably going to have to get on this. Twitter. I know. <laughs> I'm just it. resisting it. I don't think I'm that interesting to... Holding off as long yes, as you can. Yeah, I didn't... People don't want to know what I had for breakfast. Oh, I don't, I don't know. Think. I think people might. <laughs> <laughs> okay. yeah, we've talked yeah. about it. <laughs> well, we have to wrap things up, but I thank both of you for being with us here today. We'll be back with more author interviews from Seton Hill University in just a few months.